This presentation is going to be about the interest of health organizations in Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects. I work for a United States-based nonprofit organization in New York called Consumer Reports. On behalf of Consumer Reports, I develop health information on Wikipedia. Part of this presentation is inspired by the kinds of things that my organization has asked of me as I integrate health information from my organization into Wikipedia. But some of the other things from this presentation are a reflection of some of the things that I've heard from other communication organizations in New York City. New York City is a bit of a publication center, and people from different newspapers, magazines, television studios, other kinds of publishing outlets meet together and talk about what is the future of digital media, what is the future of digital publishing. Perhaps the most interesting insight that I could share with any of you is that there's nobody in the world, so far as I can tell, that really has it figured out what someone ought to be doing with general purpose health information or any kind of information if all you're trying to do is put it on the internet and share it freely with people who are trying to find it. One of the things that different people are saying all around the world is something along the lines of this statement, attention is the new currency. There's a gentleman at a museum in New York called the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He does digital communication on behalf of the museum, and he says this. Other people have said similar things. The idea behind this statement is that if you put information online, and if people are coming to this information and using it, if they seek it out and they use it when they find it, then there's some value in that. Another idea about communication is that if you put information online, you should seek out some kind of purpose. That is, uh, perhaps you want to put information online only when people, only when that information includes a link or your brand name and drives traffic from one place on the internet into another place on the internet. Of course, on Wikipedia, there's less preservation of anyone's brand. If someone shares information on Wikipedia, the intent is you share the good information that you have you might get a citation credit in the reference, but generally Wikipedia doesn't preserve brand in, say, the same way that you would preserve your brand if you put up an advertisement, if you printed a book or a pamphlet that has your logo on it, or if you did something like maintain a Twitter or Facebook account in your own name, where everything that was shared also has your name very clearly noted as an author credit. What I'm gonna tell you in this presentation is that I subscribe to this philosophy, that there's value and just getting people's attention when they read the information or use the information that you share with them. I'm gonna consider with you three things that any partner organization would need. Those three things that I'm gonna cover in my presentation are, uh, they need to be accepted, they need to get some kind of invitation if they're to come to Wikipedia and share their health information, and I'm gonna talk about what it means for an organization to be incept, accepted or invited to collaborate in the Wikipedia community. Organizations need something in return for, from Wikipedians. If they put their information in Wikipedia, they need feedback that confirms to them that it's been a, a good use of their time and resources to integrate information into Wikipedia. And finally, organizations need some information about the audience that's coming to Wikipedia to seek information, like health information. The first thing I'm gonna cover is how to invite people, organizations, to Wikipedia. I would suggest that if anyone wants to establish a partnership between an organization and the Wikipedia community, to invite the organization and use the word partners. That's just a suggestion, partners is a word that I use. And I think that partners, saying the word partners, is a comforting idea from two perspectives. On one hand, an organization needs confirmation that it really can come into Wikipedia and either tell members of, members of an organization to edit Wikipedia or it can tell other people to edit Wikipedia. And this works on all levels. When I say an organizational partnership with Wikipedia, that can be a community of five people who meet 
at a coffee house and edit Wikipedia and say, we're the coffee house group that edits Wikipedia together. Or it can mean a larger organization that has expertise in some field, and they have either their staff or other people who care about the organization come to Wikipedia and edit. It might be a professional society, a university group, any, any kind of thing. But I think that any, or, in, any group of people of any size and any level of professionalism should feel comfortable calling themselves partners with Wikipedia if they collectively as a group edit Wikipedia or contribute in accordance with the rules on Wikimedia projects. But there's another comfort in using the word partner, and that is that any Wikipedia contributor acting all by themselves is empowered to go to any organization or any institution in the world of any size and without permission from any authority in the Wikipedia community, any individual is allowed to invite any organization to share their expertise in Wikipedia, just so long as it complies with the rules of the Wikipedia community and it's in goodwill. So partnership goes two ways. It's an invitation for individuals to invite people in, and it's an invitation for an organization to contribute to Wikipedia uh, according to their field of expertise. If someone's looking for precedent, for how partnerships in Wikipedia work, even in medicine, I would suggest reading through the existing Wikipedia documentation for GLAM institutions. And it's a strange thing for me to say that supposing you're a university, supposing you're a research institution, uh, an expert organization, a professional organization, a hospital, a medical library, the the process that any of these kinds of organizations would follow if they want to share information from biomedical sciences, health sciences, medicine on Wikipedia, they can follow the same kind of procedure and the practices that art museums have established. And this is something that wouldn't be said in any publication platform or publication medium other than the Wikimedia community. So I think it's, it's very interesting and kind of a new concept that people from the arts and sciences can collaborate so closely and build off the kind of infrastructure that uh, they create together. Supposing that there is an organization, they've been convinced to come to Wikipedia and contribute information from the field of expertise to Wikimedia projects. What do they get in return for this? What is it that organizations want? What can the Wikimedia community give back to organizations to make it attractive for them to come? I, I would say that the most attractive thing that an organization can get, and as I said, attention is the new currency, it's proof that people are actually going to Wikipedia to read information. In this conference and in the Wikipedia community, I think that many people take it for granted that Wikipedia is a popular project and the world believes that it's popular. But I'm telling you in my experience, going around New York City, there's many large media organizations that do not believe that Wikipedia is a significant media outlet in terms of audience or influence. I, I happen to feel otherwise, but there, I, there needs to be supporting evidence to make more people feel comfortable spending their time developing Wikimedia projects. I don't have all the data that I need to conclusively back this statement, but I'm just gonna give you my own personal opinion and perhaps you would hear the same thing from other Wikipedians and perhaps you'd like to ask other Wikipedians about the extent to which they also agree with a statement like this, but the statement I'd like to make to you is that based on all the evidence that I've been able to find, and all the evidence and all the questions that I've asked of any other organization in the field, the conclusion to which I've come is that Wikipedia is the most requested, published, accessed, and consulted source of health and medical information in the world in the English language and in some other languages as well. The kind of data that I've looked at is uh, reviews of surveys by companies that do internet marketing research. There's been an academic paper that anyone can read, published by one of our own and some statistician experts, uh, Dr. James Howman. Some of you know him as Doc James. I I'm not gonna explain his paper, but in short, he draws blue lines which represent traffic and the most traffic that has been found based on all public evidence that anyone's been able to surface shows that Wikipedia's a more popular source of health information than competing media sources, such as the NIH, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, England's National Health Services listed here, World Health Organization, and up to date. Other organizations 
uh, have already, the information from other important expert organizations is represented on Wikipedia. One might consider, are a lot of people going to these organizations? But actually, uh, medical journals, such as the ones listed here, they really don't have so much popular appeal. Generally, if people are getting health information, they're getting it from another source. Very often, it's Wikipedia. So how does it work to report metrics or audience information about medical topics or any other topics to an organization that wishes to share information on Wikipedia? Uh, first, consider what the organization is already doing. Just about every organization that has, employs a communications team, wherever they are in the world, they have some staff investing some amount of resources in managing Twitter accounts uh, Facebook and Facebook accounts. And when a communications team is posting an organization's information to these accounts, they're, they're calculating a score. It's, it's called gamification. They make a game of it. And the way that you play the communications game nowadays is that you count the number of Facebook likes you get or the Twitter retweets that you get. Perhaps you count the views to your own website. And the more of these that you get, the better you're doing at your communications job. In Wikipedia, something that we have that's roughly equivalent is a page view. A page view represents someone going to a particular Wikipedia article and accessing the content. And anyone can generate page re reports for any set of articles. The way that one generates a page view report is that there's, I, I'm not going to technically explain it, but it's not so difficult and one can read the documentation. Choose a list of Wikipedia articles that are relevant to your interest. And perhaps if you want to track these articles, share information in them first before you start tracking them. That way you can judge the reach of the information that you've just integrated into those Wikipedia articles. After you've made a list of the Wikipedia articles that interest you, choose a date range. Perhaps you'd like a quarterly report that represents how much traffic has gone to those articles over the past three months. And then you can use a tool on Wikipedia that will generate a metrics report. The metrics report looks very good in a spreadsheet. The numbers aren't so attractive here. But what we have here is a list of Wikipedia articles and the number of page views that those Wikipedia articles have gotten for a given time range. I'm telling you that if there is general information that you want to share and that you feel that people are searching for it generally on the internet without seeking a specific brand name, like, for example, the name of any drug or medical condition, it works very well in medicine. The traffic numbers that you would get from Wikipedia are easier to get and far, far greater than you would get from any other communication strategy. It works in medicine. It works in a great many other fields as well. The last thing that I'm going to cover is supposing we know that we're getting large traffic reports or large, tra large audience numbers for a given set of Wikipedia articles. How can we describe the audience of people that's coming to Wikipedia? Perhaps you all know that Wikipedia is unusual as compared to other big websites, and that we have strong community policies and privacy, which says that neither the Wikimedia Foundation nor anyone else can track which Wikipedia readers are reading which articles. So for example, if you're on Facebook and you're reading different posts and interacting with Facebook in different ways, there's tracking systems which watch everything that you do, and different people can generate reports of what you've done on a website. On many websites on the internet, users are tracked with everything that they do. In Wikipedia, because of the privacy policy, uh, it's not possible to track people. Uh, there's, there's no established tool for tracking what people do on Wikipedia in any case. And it's not certain what should be tracked at all. What Wikipedia does offer is reports on how people are editing Wikipedia and what articles are being edited. But what's much more difficult to describe is the metrics and documentation about uh, what, audiences, what audiences come to Wikipedia and what they do when they're there. So questions we want to answer are who are the readers? How do they read? And supposing that an organization has shared information on Wikipedia and they put citations back to the full sources on Wikipedia, under what circumstances do readers of Wikipedia articles click through the links and the references and go read the original sources? I think the only way to do this is to install, have, ask readers or invite readers to voluntarily install tracking software on their browsers for the purpose of research 
for a limited time that makes them comfortable to share the information with Wikipedia. This is an established practice in different kinds of internet research. I, uh, I, in partnership with an organization in the United States called the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, actually they're providing it, I'm distributing their tool and encouraging people to participate. Uh, if anyone goes, uses uh, Google Chrome and goes to the Google Chrome application store for their browser, they can install this extension. And what the extension does is when a reader is looking on Wikipedia at different articles, it tracks which Wikipedia articles that reader visits. So no one would use this extension unless they downloaded it themselves, turned it on on their browser, and saw a green light in the top of their browser that said, you're being tracked. We need this information about your browsing behavior for research. In, ex in addition to watching what people do on Wikipedia, the tool will watch readers one jump away from Wikipedia if and only if they go from Wikipedia to a limited set of health information websites. Uh, the health information websites that it wants to track is does, we, does a re Wikipedia reader jump from Wikipedia to certain academic journals, to PubMed, to certain hospital articles, or certain very popular medical information sources? And if we had this kind of research, I think that all across Wikipedia, we could better categorize the way that people use Wikipedia and how readers interact with Wikipedia. Thank you very much for hearing me out. If you have any questions about anything that I've said, my contact information is here. I'd like to be mindful of the time that I'm sharing with another project that's related to this. So uh, I'm not going to answer questions and we'll check in at time at the end. Okay, I think you uh, ran perfect when it comes to timing. So we'll just uh, go ahead and pull up our slides. You can pick on. Um, so um, Fred Trotter, who was supposed to be here, couldn't make it, so we've jumped in. We've had a talk down at the um, me uh, medical day down in Verena and uh, a couple of other discussions. I'm uh, Cole Frederick uh, and I'm a medical student uh, who's been working with the translation, medical translation project since 2014 uh, on a part-time basis. And Lucas uh, Rosnow is um, uh, currently working part-time as well since 2015. We've got some uh, uh, very exciting results, but we wanted to focus today on uh, the way we partnered with uh, other organizations. Uh, I wanted to start off by just giving you a brief overview of why this is important. The uh, Lori Fick is uh, the founder of Translators Without Borders. And this is an interview she did, uh, or this is from an interview she uh, did uh, just about um, two, three years ago, which really relates to the way that health information actually exists today. Almost all of it is in English. Almost all of the good sources that exist are in English. Medical publishing is in English. There are very good sources in many of the bigger European languages, but as soon as you drop off the top five, uh, the number of uh, sources and the quality of those sources declines dramatically. So uh, just take, uh, to take the quote, imagine if all our health information only was available in Dutch. I mean, the English-speaking world would completely rebel against this. But the, uh, the actuality is this is, uh, the world we live in. Um, so uh, in 2012, maybe late 2011, uh, we started the Medical Translation Task Force, which was uh, a joint uh, operation between Wiki Project Med Foundation, which is the nonprofit uh, organization um, focusing on medicine and uh, any Wikimedia projects, uh, and uh, Translators Without Borders started off with uh, this uh, project. To date, we've uh, 
translated quite a bit. So I want to leave it over to Lucas. Thanks. Um, yeah, so my name's Lucas, uh, user Lucas559. So just you can get to low me a little bit. 559 is actually the dimensions of a mountain bike wheel. So I love the fact that we were here and uh, I enjoyed Mexico City, but this is, this is where I belong. Um, when I'm not out in the woods, I'm helping with this translation project. Um, and the translation project is all about partnerships. A, because I'm not officially bilingual. I come from Canada, so I have a little bit of French. Um, my wife is fluent in Spanish, but almost all the languages I work in, I don't have a clue. Okay, so that's where these partners come in. So first we take uh, amazing contact from, content from English Wikipedia and a lot of help from kind of 300 core medical editors. So we start with good stuff. Um, the things we translate are actually vetted by um, medical doctors, so we don't do entire articles because we can't be sure that that entire article is, um, quote, the truth. So we're usually working in, in summaries or in the odd case, a longer article that, you know, uh, a team of experts has, has worked through. Uh, we have a foundation that backs us up and then these translation partners. So uh, it's the end of Wikimania for most of us. Um, half of you are falling asleep and that's okay. <laughs> but I have two calls to action, okay? So uh, in the next 10 minutes, you can make um, your whole time here uh, worthwhile by doing one of two things. One is you're gonna give me suggestions on how I can uh, reward or recognize these partners I work with. And I'll talk about some of the some of the issues I have there. Who are these partners? Once you know my partners, you might have a sense of, hey, Lucas, have you tried this? You know, we send them a coffee mug in the mail or something like that. Uh, the second thing you could do to help me is uh, when I come into another language with the translation, uh, it's actually incredibly hard to integrate it, right? Um, quite a few of these, or maybe not quite a few, more than I wish, don't stick, right? Um, and these can be really nitpicky things in my mind. So for instance, in one language, when you mouse over the references, you know how the date pops up? Like uh, if you pulled something off of, uh, of the internet. So if it mouses over and it says the word December in English, but maybe we're in Croatian or something, um, that is unacceptable or offensive. And then that entire content, you know, maybe it was on... Uh, you know, postnatal hemorrhaging, some important topic is kind of thrown away from some technical issue. But I can't translate December very quickly or easily in the wiki code into Croatian, but maybe you could. So the second thing I want all of you sitting here who have a second language or work in another wiki is say, hey Lucas, sure, put me on your little list. And if you need to put something in this language, I can be maybe the first set of kind eyes to look at it so we don't have to, um, you know, kind of have reversions of, of important medical topics. And usually these are topics that don't even exist. So we're like going from zero to something good that can help people uh, and their health. And then unfortunately we go back to, to zero. So those are the two things I hope you sitting in your chairs are gonna help me with and do. So here's my partners, or some of them. Uh, Translators Without Borders, amazing organization. Um, historically, this was the vast majority of of, of my translators, but now with a content translation tool, that beta function, um, it's easier for me to get more people from more backgrounds translating. But here's the important thing to know about this group of helpers. They're not Wikipedians, okay? So what they care about perhaps, one currency they have, is word count. So I'm always very conscious of telling them of their word count. This is how many words you translated, um, and how might I, um, be able to share that with the world. I offer references for them. So a lot of people um, are trying to get more uh, economic value or get paid to translate, but they need to work up a certain number of successful translations. So I'll write a reference letter for them, which is just, just stating the facts. This is what this person has done for me and they did it on time and so on and so forth. Um, another partner we have uh, is sometimes for-profit translation firms and uh, maybe Carl will jump in and talk really quickly about the rubric 
Um, so rubric, uh, I just want to do a slight shout out uh, concerning that uh, collaboration. Uh, basically, after Wikimania 2014 in London, I met with uh, the uh, CEO and CTO of Rubric uh, on a completely unofficial meeting, which was organized by another Wikimedian at here, um, who's actually here at Wikimania, Esenolario. Uh, um, and that was Ayla Hadao Flood, who's uh, with uh, Wikimedia uh, South Africa. So basically what they've done is they've translated over 100 articles of, on very important topics, most of them into African languages. So you have articles like um, on maybe not so glamorous, but extremely important topics, um, such as diarrhea, translated into, uh, for example, Sutu, Northern Sutu, uh, Kosa languages, and any matter of languages that you might not even have heard of uh, previously, but they are spoken by 15 million people. Uh, a cool example is, is, or I shouldn't say that, but in uh, relation to the Ebola crisis in 2014, uh, was when we really got started, we were able to translate that article into over 68 languages in part uh, through help with a uh, rubric and some of the content they translated into African languages was basically the first content available on these um, African uh, Wikipedias. So, Thanks. Um, we've already passed our kind of five minute warning so I'm going to jump to the end, because we want to have time for questions and, and feedback. Um, keep on going, I think, for... Keep going. Uh, so there's how you get in touch with, with Carl and I. Um, uh, I'm really looking for these suggestions, because this is basically just um, human management, human resources. You know, how do you get your project um, in your workplace, in your church, in, in whatever, to, to kind of build and, and, and keep things going? All those ideas, I would... I, I would I would welcome, um, and we'd love to get, just send me a note and just say, this is a language I work in, I'll, I'll gladly help you integrate things. It might be Mike over there, someone who speaks Dutch said, I will put a posting out to my, uh, to my peeps, I'll let them know that you are, uh, my project has over 300 summaries of high quality medical articles available, and then in that language, in this case Dutch, they requested, they said, oh, we're missing these four articles and our eating disorder article is horrible. So within two days of being at Wikimania, I've got a request for five articles. And since they're being requested by that language, by individual Wikipedians, I assume it's gonna be easy when I turn around and give them the translation to say, well, here's what you asked for. Now let's help, let's help share um, much needed medical information in that language. Okay, a third person. So even, even helping in that way, because again, I can't go to Dutch and read through all your medical content and see that's a horrible eating disorder article or you lack content on, you know, prenatal vitamins or something, right? So I, I need help with those, uh, those little tasks. So um, we probably have two minutes left. Um, so we have questions from all three of us talking. So we'd... And just as a side note, uh, you can probably assume that we're working in your languages uh, if you're not in German or French. And if you're in German or in French, the only reason we're not working with you is because we really need strong community support to be able to do anything there. And if you're willing to provide that, uh, you're more than welcome. Hello, I have a questions, two questions for the first presentation. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much. It was really interesting. Uh, my questions are, uh, uh, I contribute to the Hebrew Wikipedia, and in the Hebrew Wikipedia, uh, we have uh, a comment on each uh, article that relate to medicine that saying, please do not rely uh, on this information. You should talk with the doctor. So I just wonder uh, what it what it's means for you. And my second question, can you be more specific and tell exactly which topics uh, are interesting, interesting for the readers? Uh, for example, if something happened to me, I wonder if the first thing that someone will do is 
to go and look what, I should, what, what to do, something like that. I see. Uh, the first question was about warnings about the quality of health information on Wikipedia. This has been a controversial topic. There's a history of discussion about what kind of warning, if any, Wikipedia health articles should have on it. I'm not going to give an opinion about what should or shouldn't be done at, the, at this time. I don't think there's consensus. If somebody would like to enter the conversation and continue arguments and discussions, then you're invited to do so. Right now, uh, so far as I understand, other people might have other perspectives. The thought is that Wikipedia, Wikipedia's policy about issuing warnings on the health information is in line with what other similar media organizations do. And since other similar media organizations do not put prominent warnings, then neither does Wikipedia when the quality is similar. So uh, that, but anyone can enter the, the, the conversation and go further. As far as what anyone else can do with health information or which articles are priority on Wikipedia, I can tell you how I operate. I get guidance from local uh, health experts in my country, the United States. So when there's a medical organization, like for example, a professional society for cardiology, radiology, gynecology, the experts in a given field, when they present uh, certain information for public service and say these are good topics that everyone in the country should understand, that's the kind of information that I'm sharing. So I'm actually joining in health education campaigns that are established by experts and not necessarily choosing priorities only within Wikipedia or, or by my own interest. Questions for these two, please. Uh, yes, my, my question is about um, the fact that many of the articles that you will be translating are dynamic. The subject will develop um, over time uh, and sometimes very dramatically um, over a short time. Um, how are you going to control for that so that if, say, an article on diarrhea has been translated into 20 languages um, and somebody comes up with some, something completely new about that, that the translations in the 20 languages are not reflecting the old information and not the new information? Okay, uh, I think I can give a pretty good answer to that. And uh, basically, we've been around since 2012. Uh, and we have 1,900 articles translated. That gives us uh, a, such a time frame that we haven't really uh, come across the problem where one of the fields that we're working on has any extremely major changes. Uh, of course, that will be the case, and uh, we have our list of articles we've prepared, which ranges right now in the 300s. And uh, we're constantly reviewing what we have prepared. We have uh, stable and dynamic versions in English, which uh, if any major breakthrough were to happen, say for example in the field of diarrhea, uh, that is uh, unlikely. But if there were, we would of course assess, is this information outdated or is, is it simply outdated and there are newer recommendations or is this for example, directly harmful. For ex if you take um, the uh, baby sleeping position, uh, we've uh, uh, translated our articles on SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, and uh, if, for example, a new recommendation were to come out um, say, uh, saying that uh, children shouldn't sleep on their stomachs, which was happening in the 80s, then we would, of course, go very quickly and uh, go through all the articles we had translated trying to um, correct this information. Um, so uh, we're, we're listening to any comments when it comes to that, but it's also something that will become more apparent as we grow to become a bigger project as well. If I could add something to that, there is kind of the expectation though that when they get moved into a language, they will be localized and that people will come in and make changes to it and, you know, to make it be more uh, pertinent to that local language. So, because it, it is somewhat generic, me medical conditions and treatments, the way they're researched are, are, can be generic, yet there can be local applications that are very specific. So that is actually a good thing if people come and make those types of changes. Isn't that correct? Yes, and uh, I think uh, 
one of the reasons uh, which we mentioned earlier, uh, why we're working so much in summaries and which, why we've moved away from longer article translations is because by translating a f uh, three or four, four paragraph summary, we're also able to see it as planting a seed for someone else to later on uh, continue wor uh, the work on. Uh, and in that sense, we're also able to hopefully contribute in a meaningful way to uh, the Wikipedias we translate into, not just, hey, here's this uh, 10,000 word article that is uh, very difficult to uh, improve upon, for example, uh, or that not necessarily is difficult to improve upon, but it might be at least a bit more daunting to go as someone uh, in a, um, a smaller language and uh, completely revise it. We will be around, so uh, I think you, you've got our faces, so uh, it's time for the next talk.